All righty, Pastor Charlie. How are you doing today, my friend? I'm well. How are you, Brian? Thanks for uh, connecting in this way. This is great. Absolutely. It's a different world nowadays, right? Connecting this way. Uh, it certainly I'm... is. Yeah. You know, and as you can see, I got the got the COVID uh, unshaven look, so hopefully I look cool. Perfect. That's oh, all. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, you so got the mullet going. Yeah, I got the mullet going. <laughs> How's the summer been for you? Pretty good? It's been good. You know, uh, we've adapted as well as we can. My wife still seems to like me and hasn't kicked me out. Uh, which is good, which is a blessing. Yes, uh, um, Hope yours has been good as well. It has been. Yeah, it has been. We, um, um, it, you know, we, we tend to be travelers, uh, so we haven't done as much traveling as we right. were in the summer, go camping and other places and stuff. We haven't had a chance to do a lot of that this summer, but it's been good. Good, good family time. Like you know. That's good. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you, if I may. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, summertime, right? Uh, summertime in general, can be a little difficult to be engaged, weekly attendance with church, quiet time at home, devotional time, uh, sure. right? So put a pandemic on top of that, right? That's yeah. just going to add to that. It takes a little bit more commitment, a little bit more effort. And uh, I think if I was sitting here and telling you that I haven't missed a beat in my spiritual walk this summer, I wouldn't be telling the truth probably. Uh, but I did earlier this summer, and I'm curious if I may kind of get your thoughts. I did earlier this summer uh, have one of the devotionals, one of the studies that I did do uh, was around stewardship. And I know we're starting to get later into the year and the financial cam campaign will be coming down the road. Um, but it just, it, it was really good. It really stuck out to me because one of the things that it talked about was how stewardship is more than money. I think I bet you anybody who's watching this video right now, when they heard me use the word stewardship, they immediately went to, oh, great. Is this a campaign video? Is that what we're getting, right? Is that what we're getting right Get out your checkbooks. Yeah. <laughs> Get out your checkbooks, yeah. If anybody use checkbooks anymore, yeah. But seriously, was this 98? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, um, but that's where everybody's brain goes to, right? right. What I loved about the study was it talked about how stewardship is so much more. And I, I hope I can get this right. One of the quotes that it said was, if we're created by a creator, not of ourselves, then our life is not ours, right? right. And I really like that because it talked a lot about stewardship is relationships. It's all the things that we've been given, right? I mean, it's, I imagine there's quite a few sermons in there, right? That you could- Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, the, the word itself, you know, being a good steward of what you have received. And so, I mean, there's many layers to it, and I'm sure we'll get into some of that. But if we have been given by God all of these blessings, you know, our life, our gifts, not just financial gifts, but abilities and skills and time, if all that belongs to God and he's given us these things, we need to be good stewards of, of it. So it's it basically is a reflection of how much we are appreciate and value what God has given to us. It's a reflection of that. So absolutely. And it not, it's not just about money, but all the things we've been given. There's a, uh, it, and I feel like servant leadership, that's a big buzzword nowadays, right? Mm -hmm. servant leadership. Yeah. And that really, I think, plays well with what stewardship is. Understanding maybe the gifts that we've been given, um, in utilizing those gifts because they are entrusted to us. Right. Serving others, right? Right. Well, it's like one of my favorite parables, which can be hard to take sometimes, like a lot of Jesus's parables. Mm -hmm. It's the parable of the talents. You know, the, oh, yeah, yeah. the, the three different men who received a certain amount of talents. And of course, the one who is the center of the parable is the one who just received one talent and buried it in the ground, uh, afraid to use it, to risk it. And of course, in the parable itself, you may remember, he was uh, heavily scolded for not doing something with that talent. And so I'm a firm believer in that. And I've, I repeated in my sermons that, you know, one day God's going to ask each of us, I gave you these things. What did you do with them? Yeah. Uh, and I think that's important for us to remember. And to whom much is given, much is required. And that's part of stewardship as well. I got a question for you, if, if you don't mind. And mm -hmm. please feel free to turn the question back on me, too, if you'd like. Um, prayers, presence, gifts, service, witness. Mm -hmm. I think both of us would agree we struggle with all five of those. 
But if I ask you the question, what's one you really struggle with? What's kind of the first one that comes to mind, if you don't mind me asking that? Oh, gosh. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the started off, I, I think, yeah, all of us struggle with all of them because they all require discipline. Mm-hmm. And that's part of stewardship is it's a spiritual discipline to set aside time and your money uh, to be good stewards of those things. Um, prayers, presence, gifts, service, witness. Um, I'd say. I love putting you uh, <laughs> No, no, it's good. I, you know, I, I've struggled with, with all of them so much. I, I think the first thing is, I think prayers, mm-hmm. the first thing that comes to mind, although I've, I've tried all throughout my ministry to have a, a special prayer time. And that's one of the reasons why this, the, the regular prayer uh, time I have on Facebook that's live has been so good for me because mm-hmm. it, it forces me into those times. And I've always preached the importance of spiritual disciplines to have your Bible reading, to have your prayer time. And overall, I think I've done a pretty good job, but I, it's a constant struggle for me mm-hmm. to have that discipline because I just want to get up and go and do. And, but I've learned that if I can have the discipline to take five or 10 minutes in the morning, and that's the best time for me, my day goes much better and I have more clarity, but it's every day. It's a struggle. Every day I have to str- It's like exercise. Yeah. That's exactly what it's like. I don't enjoy it. I always feel better after I do it, but that the 30 seconds it takes to, for me to make that decision to get on that treadmill or whatever is brutal, you know, but once I decide to do it, then yeah. It's that initial, that initial step, right? Right. My father, um, my grandfather, my dad's dad, um, I had this saying, um, he's kind of like, you know, a lot of folks talk about how you need a Paul, a Barnabas and a Timothy, right? Someone to pour into you, someone for you to walk with and you to pour into somebody. Right. And, and my grandfather. Let me write that down. It's a good three point sermon. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> my, my grandfather is by far my Paul. Um, okay. A couple of Pauls over the years, but mm-hmm. by far was the biggest Paul, the biggest spiritual impact in me. And he would say that you haven't started your day, Brian, until you've started it on your knee. Yeah. Your day That'll started. preach. I've always, I've yeah, I have a mentor who has, does something similar if, if you have bad knees. And that is, you know, he says, well, what he personally does is when he wakes up in the morning, uh, before his feet hit the floor, mm-hmm. he gives himself and his day to God. And that's, that's his, the physicality of it. Before mm-hmm. my feet hit the floor, mm-hmm. I'm going to pray to the Lord and ask him to, to guide me throughout the day. And I think that's, that's how, that can be helpful too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I like that gift. Give that day. It's not going back to the beginning part of our conversation. It's not our day, right? Right. It was given to us. Absolutely. Let's give it back. Let's give it back in service and these different vows that we're talking about, right? Definitely. Um, And that's, that's, that's the core thing when it comes to stewardship. I've learned throughout my ministry that I have to constantly focus on whether it's sermons or whatever I'm doing to communicate stewardship. I mean, it often is related to money, but it's, again, all those things. And that is, these things don't belong to us. Mm -hmm. And and God is simply asking for us to use them. If you think of this as how these are things that are given to us, these gifts, Mm -hmm. and if you understand that, you would accept that, then there can quickly become this overwhelming sense of responsibility as well. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to not let that get out of control. Am I not doing enough? Um, should You know what I mean? Like it's hard to then let that snowball in the other way. And it takes me to a verse that I think we'll start seeing a lot in church and hearing a lot in communications as we get into the fall. And it's um, Romans 12, 12. Uh, and I do not have it memorized yet. Um, I try to have scripture memorized. I have little note cards I keep at the office um, that uh, I uh, try to read. So I have a few that I have memorized. This is not one of them. But if I can remember the gist of it, um, Paul talks about being joyful in hope, mm-hmm. patient in affliction, right? Think about what's going on right now, COVID, pandemic, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And then faithful in prayer. So yeah. you're feeling overwhelmed and have all these things going on, joyful in hope, patient in affliction, 
faithful in prayer, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I'm, and I'm glad you said responsibility because I think that's, that's another key piece to stewardship, not only from a theological standpoint of God has given us these things and uh, we are to be stewards of what we've received, but also the responsibility of what it means to be members of a church. Yeah. And that's something that's extremely important, that we're all part of the body of Christ. There's no such thing as a Christian who's not part of the church. They can choose not to go to a local church, but you're grafted into the body the moment you decide to follow Christ. And part of that is you have a responsibility to the church you're um, connecting to. And mm -hmm. those vows outline perfectly those responsibilities. Uh, and I'm glad that we're lifting those out because we constantly have to remind people that, you know, you're not a spectator. Uh, this is not uh, just going to the show and leaving. This is, you're part of the church. And this is your responsibility. So. Uh, very good point. And that's why I'm excited um, um, going forward to start looking at potentially seeing some videos around these vows. Um, so uh, I enjoyed talking with, talking with you, man. I love Me uh, too, I love Brian. It. I appreciate it. Let's do this more often. I think you're right. And where people will actually have to, you know, wear pants and shorts when they're, when they're talking to someone as opposed to, you know, just being in their boxers. Which, exactly. by the way, I am, I am, I do have shorts on, just so you know. Well, but anyway. what does say? I'm not going to stand up while we're making this video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it, Brian. Uh, you too, buddy. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day today. Man. Hey, you too. Thanks a lot. All right, talk to you later. Bye. Bye. All right.